Nearly every year, the i5 NUC has been the standout performance per dollar option if you want a quality Intel mini PC of this size. With NUC 12 Pro, the i5 is close to being my pick for 12th gen units again, but there are just a couple of issues keeping it from snatching the podium. Thanks to Raytan for loaning me this NUC and making this review possible. Just like the flagship i7, the i5 1240p features 12 cores, 16 threads, and Intel XE graphics. The difference comes down to lower max clock speeds, a reduction in cache, and less EUs on the iGPU. The i5 NUC 12 Pro comes in at 780 Aussie dollars for the bare bones, and that includes a three year warranty. In the box, you've got a 120 watt power supply, manual, monitor mount, and screws. I've got the light version here, which isn't for sale in Oz. The difference with the light model is that the dual Thunderbolt 4 ports on the rear have been removed as a cost saving measure. Since it's not for sale here, I can't tell you how much cheaper it is. Anyway, I'm going to review this i5 as if it was the regular tall version for $780 Aussie. You can max out the tall kit with three storage drives, a regular 2280 M.2 NVMe, a not so easy to find M.2 2242 SATA SSD, and the 2.5 inch drive. Once you've added a storage drive and memory, you'll need to install an OS. In my i7 review, I didn't get the BIOS features correct, so I'm going to clarify them here. You can manually specify wattage. What I thought was locked is accessible if you change external ambient temperature tolerance to user defined. In performance and processor, you can turn off individual cores if needed. Same as with the ASUS PN64 I reviewed previously. The latest BIOS also lets you set the fan mode as fixed or custom where you can tune it to your liking. The current Windows 11 installation build is missing various drivers including Wi-Fi and Ethernet, so you'll need to download them to a USB drive beforehand to get everything up and running. Let's take a look at how the i5 NUC performs, especially against the i7 and the 12500H found in the ASUS PN64, which is around the same price. The i5 NUC is 3% behind the PN64 and 7.5% behind the i7 NUC in Cinebench single core. The generational leap from last year's i5 is almost 25%. Cinebench multi-core was a nice surprise. The NUC beat the ASUS PN64 consistently by a small margin and was 9% behind the i7. Overall, a generational leap of almost 65%. Cinebench R23's 10 minute test was even more interesting. No surprise in single core, but the i5 NUC was consistently the winner in multi-core. This simply comes down to this i5 not getting as hot inside, but we'll look into that later. However, that didn't result in the fastest video encoding result. It's almost 5% behind the i7. Okay, with the CPU side out of the way, let's check out the integrated graphics. This is where the i5 NUC falls behind the other two minis. 10% against the PN64, and 22.5% against the i7 and DX11. Still, that's a generational improvement of just over 13%. In DX12, the i5 falls behind by 4.5% to the PN64, and 26% compared to the i7 NUC. The generational improvement here is just a measly 3% according to 3D Mark. Let's see how 3D Mark's results stack up against games. A couple of really cool shooters came out recently, and I wanted to see how they perform on the NUC. Proteus is a damn fine looking game that mixes modern and retro graphics. In outside areas, it does decently around the 45 FPS mark, but drops to just 30 inside buildings. Metal Hellslinger combines heavy metal music rhythm gameplay plus demon slaying. What's not to like? This one is heavy on the iGPU, and at 720p low stays in the mid 30fps to low 40s. I hope to dedicate some time to them soon, but not on a NUC. Now for the direct comparisons. In Forza Horizon 5, the i5 NUC has around a 10% drop in frame rate compared to the PN64, and the i7 is far ahead with around 30% more frames. The i5 NUC is clearly behind in Hades as well, where the margins are even larger.
While in Doom Eternal, the Forza percentages return. And in Valorant, the i5 knock wins! Take that 3D mark! Jokes aside, it all depends on the map and action on screen in this game. Whichever mini you use, you should get a nice 144Hz experience. God of War has the least variation in performance, with the i5 knock around 10% behind the other two. So, the graphics have taken a substantial hit when going down the product stack. Of course, these boxes are also good for emulation and retro gaming. In Semu, you'll get 60 FPS in most games. In PS3, it depends if the game actually runs without crashes or graphical glitches. We still need more iGPU power and better drivers, so it's not recommended. Either way, it's clear the 12th gen CPUs are very capable. Idle power draw is the same as the other 12th gen units. And pretty much the same for the recorded maximum. Considering the extra wattage being shot into these knucks, it's good to see the i5 able to keep the same CPU temp as last year's unit. While the i5 knuck handle the heat better than the other two, it's still power and thermal throttles, just not as much. I do wonder if the tall unit helps a bit with cooling. Unfortunately, I've never had a slim and tall knock with the same CPU to directly compare, one of these days. But given the tall unit has more surface area, it should have some impact. Both knocks are much quieter minis under load than the ASUS PN64, which is too loud for me. So, Intel's i5 NUC 12 Pro holds up really well in CPU performance versus the flagship, but the cutdown iGPU results in a hit to the graphics, up to 30%. And at current Oz pricing, the i5 is 22% cheaper, so those wanting the highest graphics performance may find the i7 to be worth the premium. One thing that's very clear to me is that I'd rather have the i5 NUC over the i5 ASUS PN64. That Mini has no Thunderbolt 4 ports and more fan noise. The one year warranty sucks too. Come on ASUS, you need to match Intel's 3 years on this. A 10% improvement in graphics performance and slightly better single thread CPU doesn't change anything. With a more consumer oriented performance line of NUX now being fully dead, the i5 would have launched at $600 Aussie and been the clear winner. But at $780, it's clear as mud. Either way, I'd recommend the NUX over any of the ASUS PN64 line. But before you go, check out my i7 NUX review as it's something you need to watch before making a decision on your next mini purchase. Cheers!